Hi folks, welcome to Online Astronomy. Um, I am your instructor, Mary Purvis, and I am here to kind of lay out some of the, the background information on the course. Through the span of the semester, we are going to study lots of really fun, interesting things. Black holes, the history of astronomy, nebulae, uh, star clusters, the sun, planets, the life cycle of stars, and even constellations. I truly love astronomy and love teaching it, and I really hope by the semester's end that you enjoy it half as much as I do. Um, this is me. Uh, you're not going to see me very often in the videos. You're going to see hear my voice and see me writing on the screen, but that is kind of what I look like. And here is my email. It's located all, all over the course. And so if you have any questions at any time, please ask. Um, I will do my best to check the email very, very often, excuse me, <clears throat> and uh, get your questions answered in a timely manner if possible. Now, supplies. What do you actually need for the course? First off, you're going to need a textbook. Here's a copy of our textbook, The Cosmos um, by Astronomy in the New Millennium by Pasikoff and Filipenko. I wanted to choose an astronomy textbook that contains some good scientific information. And our two authors, Jay Pasikoff and Alex Filipenko, are well-known, prominent scientists. And if you ever watch the universe series on Science Channel or Discovery Channel, you might recognize these two gentlemen. They do pop up now and then. I get quest students asking me, do I need to buy the textbook? Well, well you're going to have 15 assignments out of the textbook, so my response is yes, you're going to need a, the book. If you are really, really pinching your pennies, you can borrow this textbook from the library, but you can only check it out for two hours at a time. So that is an option. It is out there. But just be aware that uh, there is a limit to how much you can use that library book. You're going to need a calculator that can handle scientific notation. What do I mean by scientific notation? This something times 10 to the, like 3 times 10 to the 8th, 4 times 10 to the negative 7th. When we're dealing with stars, we're talking about things that are very, very big, large masses, and very far away. So we need scientific notation so that we can work with those numbers. I encourage people to have pencils as well as pens because you're human and most of us make mistakes eventually. And one of the other required pieces of equipment for this online course is a planisphere. Here's a picture of a planisphere. You've been asked to buy one for 40 to 50 degrees north latitude, which is where we live. If you are kind of astronomy inclined, you may have one around the house. And if you have one that is 30 to 40 degrees north latitude, that will actually work and you don't have to buy another one. But we're going to use the planisphere in a handful of our different labs. And I think it's just, from an astronomy observation standpoint, a really cool thing to have. Math. This is an introductory astronomy class. Um, the purpose of this class is not to prepare you to go work at NASA, I'm sorry to say. But because of that, we are going to use very, very simple math. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide. That's all we're going to do. And you, there's no calculator math on tests aside from simple things like 3 times 2 or 4 plus 7, just really, really simple things. Um, if you have a calculator on your phone, that will be just fine. How is this class going to flow? We have 15 separate lessons, and that means we're going to do approximately one per week. If you happen to be taking this in a summer school class, summer school is twice as fast. So you're going to be doing two lessons per week just so you're prepared and ready for that. For every lesson, there are some videos made by me, your instructor, that I'm going to ask you to watch. That's how you're going to get the lectures and the notes. There are some supplemental videos that are produced by outside sources, NASA, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, TV shows like the Universe series, and I am going to ask you to watch some of these to illustrate a lot of the cool stuff in astronomy that is a lot prettier and more interesting in 3D than me just writing on a tablet. For each one of our lessons, there is a study guide that you are going to be completing, and that is going to use the book and use the lectures 
and use the labs to help answer the questions in those study guides. You're going to turn this in for points. Each week we're going to do a lab. Now these are at-home labs. Um, this is a lab course and that means you're going to do stuff at home with common household items and we'll talk more about those labs in the next video. But uh, you're going to turn one of those in per week for points. There's going to be a weekly quiz again for points and that's going to be totally online and there's going to be a midterm and a final also online and all of these are how you're going to earn the points and your grade. So the study guides are 10 points each, the weekly labs are 20 points each, the weekly quizzes are 20 points each, the midterm and the final are both 150 points each. It ends up with right around a thousand points for the entire semester um, and your grade is going to be a percentage of the points that you earn compared to the points possible. And it's just as simple as that. The grading scale is a classic 90, 80, 70, 60, A, B, C, D, F. And so nothing too exotic or wacky there. Schedule. Online, I'll show you where you can find a copy of the schedule. And the schedule is going to help be kind of your blueprint that you should follow as you're going day to day through the class. Each lesson is will have a due date for that lesson and it will include a list of things that must be submitted by that due date. And I like a rhythm and a flow. I like something predictable, especially if you're working online, so that there's not a lot of weird and craziness. You know from lesson to lesson exactly what you have to do. So for every lesson there's going to be a study guide, a lab, and a quiz. Next lesson, study guide, lab, quiz. And the only time this is going to vary is when we have our midterm and our final. Let's talk about online versus self-paced. Um, this is an online class. It is not self-paced. Now, here's what that means. There will be due dates weekly for assignments that you need to turn in on a weekly basis. Late work is not accepted. If the due date passes and you don't have things turned in, you are not going to get a grade on them and they will be zero because you have multiple you know multiple days to get things done it is part of your responsibility as a student to get those assignments done and turned in in a timely manner um, now there is a slight self-paceness if you want to work ahead Many people have things that come up in their life. They want to go on vacation. They have a wedding they want to attend. And if that's what's going on in your life and you don't want to worry about your astronomy class, go ahead, work a few lessons ahead, go off, enjoy your event, come back, and you will have lost no points. So you can always work early. You can always work ahead. Um, I had a student one time who completed the course in two weeks, the entire course, and did a really good job. But this per person had two weeks off and just did it and did absolutely everything. So that is possible. For astronomy, it's going to be a little trickier because you're going to need more like a month because of the astronomical observations that you have to do. More about that later dropped grades. All your grades are going to be put into a computer program and the program will automatically drop your lowest quiz, lab, and study guide grade. Why? Everybody has something that comes up. You get sick, you have technical difficulties, a computer doesn't work, your internet doesn't work, whatever, or you have a family emergency. Grandma gets sick and you've got to you know, go see her in the hospital. We all have life that occurs. By dropping your lowest grade, it gives you a freebie for each of these in case life just plain happens. If you have a nice boring semester and nothing weird happens, well, then what will happen is the lowest grade will get dropped and it will help elevate your grade. For example, let's say you have one quiz where you get 8 out of 20 and all of the rest of your quizzes you get 20 out of 20. Well, then what the computer will do is drop the low one and it will make your grade a smidge higher. So it is to your benefit and does not do you any harm. How much time are you going to have to commit to this course? This is a three credit college level science course with a lab. Now if you were going to take this in a face-to-face -face format, and I do teach this in a face-to-face -face format, students attend two hours of lecture a week and they attend a two-hour lab weekly. Besides, they have to do some homework. 
They have to read the book, do the study guide, and then do reviewing and studying for the quizzes and exams, etc. So please expect to put in at least six hours per lesson and at least six hours per week minimum. If you are taking this summer school, you're taking this class twice as fast. So please do not be surprised if you are putting in 12 hours per week into your astronomy class. That's the amount of time it's going to take. Now it that is minimum. Um, it may take a little more for some people versus others based on your past scientific knowledge. Um, and you might personally have some technological difficulties. It happens. Uh, so be aware that that is kind of the plan, but the plan does vary from individual to in individual. I try and make each lesson approximately the same amount of time so that you can sort of budget your time as we go through the course. Okay, folks, that is going to end our first introductory video. And next time, I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour around the online class. See you then.